Hey kids, today we will be learning about the history of acting. One can't discuss the history of acting without talking about the cult of, Di cult of Dionysus. Now the cult of Dionysus was a group of people that were seen as outcasts from Greek society that came together and celebrated Dionysus in the form of wine, frivolity, and just really partying. And one of the rituals that this cult performed was the procession from Euthyria to Athens, where they did chants and sang songs along the way that they called, and that we know them as, as dithyrams. Now, one person during this procession would come out of the group and do the actions and perform the verses of the play as if they were the characters. And this man was named Thespis. And he is the first actor in recorded history and the one credited for the use of masks in order to switch characters super quickly in Greek theater. Now this art form stayed kind of within itself until a tyrant named Presbystratos came to power over Athens. Now he wanted to find a way to unite all the people that he just conquered and glorify Athens. So he came up with making a festival called the Pantheatric Festival and adding Dithyram contests in it where different troops would perform different romantic tragedies and comedies at the time. Now the people that watched these were not only very entertained and saw this as a way of, of religious praise of whoever the festival was honoring, but they also saw it as their civic duty to learn as much of, from these plays as they could to learn of what a good person would do and what a good society looks like. Now this was all well and good until the Romans came and they conquered Greece and spread their art and theater everywhere. But they didn't keep the religious aspect of the art of acting into it. They saw it as another form of entertainment except they already had a lot of entertainment and they saw actors as lazy and they often associated actors with other professions and thus did not see them very highly. And, that, and as the Roman Empire grew, it became a monotheistic empire of Christianity and everyone was Christian and no one likes theater as a Christian, even more than the Romans hated them because not only was it seen as lazy and unethical, but it was also an unholy act to do as it encouraged people to do sin. So yeah, actors did not have it great back then. And the art form kind of almost died out with like really small performances of like mimes or uh, underground performances. And it didn't really come back until the 10th century BCE of the medieval era, where it was said that there was a little show put on during the Easter Sunday service where Mary would come to the tomb and see that it was empty and they would sing a very short thing. And the whole performance in and of itself was kind of short, but it was enough to spark the interest of theater back up again. This added with the uh, writings of different new plays by none other than Nun Hrochteva really helps theater grow and actors become a little more popular back in this period. So much so that actors started to come together in groups and different actor troops will perform different scenes from the Old Testament as the acting went away from the pews of the church and out onto the streets. But during this time, there was some religious upheaval and a declaration that the clergymen and the members of the choir could no longer perform, thus making theater at this time turn from religious to secular. And this stayed for a little bit and actors would travel from place to place until the Italian Renaissance came and religion was kind of pushed to the side while other arts flourished like philosophy, science, math, 
and art and, well, theater. And especially in Italy, there was a new form of theater called Camilla dell'arte, where the actors would act as certain stock characters and they would be put in different scenes and different situations to see how the story would develop. Now, as I said, the characters themselves were the same over and over and over again, but the situations and the character dynamics that came out of these really is what made them interesting. And the Renaissance finally made its way to England and Queen Elizabeth I, along with uh, theater, was kind of growing, but at this time also was religious dissent amongst um, the Protestants and the Christians. And thus she made two new proclamations that no religious or political play could be performed, which kind of killed a lot of the different plays that were done during the medieval era. And actors were officially varagrants, or supposed criminals, and could be fined from going town to town, which uh, <laughs> was kind of exactly how like theater worked at that time. So actors at this time were already seen in a kind of a negative light and now the queen herself just said that there were a bunch of varagrants that could be acted like that under the law. There were a lot of groups that just straight up didn't like them. And a lot of guilds hated their guts because actors didn't work professionally like they did in the sense that you had to be an apprentice for 10 years and then you could actually start working at the firm and then you work your way out the ring. Acting didn't have that. So a lot of these different members from these guilds called them masterless and thus, could frame them for crimes that they did not commit because it was way easier to blame the nasty, dirty old actor. To protect them from such persecution, the actors formed troops and guilds of their own and went after and sought patronage of the high lords and ladies of the land and would name their troop after them, like the Lord Chamberlain's men, Lord Admiral's men, or the King's men. So in this way, they could claim that they were not masterless, but in fact servants of these high lords and ladies that were funding them for these plays. Now, actors were still not seen barely highly, and there was many suspicions about an actor themselves, but the art of theater and plays became more and more popular, and people would go outside of the city because, again, theater inside, theater and acting inside of the city was outlawed, they would come to the building, which is one of the first, one of the first instances of a permanent residence for actors and came to the theater to watch these different plays. And one famous playwright from this era is Shakespeare. Not only was he an actor, but he was a phenomenal playwright and a shareholder of the Globe Theater. What he did that changed actors was he wrote characters that stayed human throughout the entire thing. Most actors and playwrights would often perform a story where one character is death, this is the villain and this is the hero, but he allowed humanity in all these characters, whether they were the hero or the villain, so you could understand that character and have the character question themselves, is this the right thing to do? Is this the wrong thing to do? And kind of force the audience to ask, to ask those same questions themselves. And then Puritans came into power and they completely killed off theater with kind of the same reasons that uh, the early like Roman Christians hated them, but this time was like, boom, you're done. So that kind of sucked for a long time. And again, only survived on the fringe of society with these tiny performances and some underground place until the Renaissance made its way to France and French neoclassicism began, where they revived the era of art, of theater and acting, and not only revived some of the old plays from uh, Aristotle's and uh, Plato's time, but wrote their own plays as they performed it as more of a new form of art. 
than just purely entertainment. Now, with this, there were a lot of rules and pros that were compacted into how to write these plays and how the characters should act and this and that. And as more people started to ask more and more questions like, well, what if we did this? Or what if that character didn't have to do that? And acting and theater evolved from there. And the rest is history. All the things that we see in modern acting are the evolution of acting as an art form. And now actors can uh, express new and difficult and convoluted emotions as realistically as they possibly can in whatever story that the mood calls for. So, to recap, the Greek actor wore masks and they performed for religious reasons and everybody loved them. Roman actors got rid of the masks, did a little more, a little different costumes, and did it purely for entertainment, and a lot of people hated them. Medieval actors were usually clergymen or people of the choir, until they weren't, had simple costumes and did it for religious reasons, and there were still people in the aristocracy that didn't like them. And then you have the Italian Renaissance with the Camilla della Arte, where these actors really only performed comedy and did it for entertainment purposes on a lower scale. Now, there were still people of high power that didn't like them, but the art of acting became a little more fun. And then you have the actors of Shakespeare's era who were not respected by aristocrats, nobility, or peasants. Like a lot of people just didn't like them, but they loved the stories that they told. And actors themselves got to act in new and different ways than they could before. And then uh, the French with the French neoclassicism era brought in new reforms to this art form that was still entertainment, but mainly it was super cool art form. And people generally liked it again, just as much as they would like the next Picasso or painter. And then you have the modern era where any actor could be anyone or anything that any story could possibly call for. And most people, if not all people, generally, generally like actors and see them more as celebrities, if uh, famous enough. Thank you very much for watching this video. Until then, I bid you all adieu.